again, Gooners! And, you know, overdubs in the background from Mr. Alan Gibson. Hello, Gooners! He likes saying that. He'll be saying it a lot. This is number 60. This is the first one I could remember the number of for quite some time. So do forgive me about that. There's the sign. It's made it. It's really weird when I look at myself doing this because I'm pointing in the opposite direction to the way I'm actually pointing. But I'm going to point that way now. Get on with it! And uh, enter stage right. Or is it stage left? I can't remember which way you do it as an actor. actor. I used to be an actor back in the day. Not for long. They kicked me out. But we're bringing him in. It's Alan Gibson on a string. Invisible string. That was terrible miming. But here he is. Here he is. We're going to talk about Arsenal for the loose cannon. I mean, I've, I've drilled it into him that he's got a, a bit like Arsenal's defence looking well drilled at the moment with Steve Bold. What? That was a good link. Have they let a goal link? in yet? No. Exactly. God. So, but they're, but they're yeah. not winning 1 0. What's wrong? I have to explain Sugoi means great. Oh, yes, yeah. Sugoi is great. In Japanese. But you know, Steve Bold, actually, I noticed that he, I mean, he is, he's, he's totally, isn't he? I mean, he's, he's, he's bold. Yeah. And they're running headlines like the bold and the beautiful, and that kind of thing could, could upset Arsene Wenger, don't you think? Because he's not beautiful, is he? He's not as beautiful as Steve. No, Steve's a cutie. So, what do you reckon? Do you remember what happened with Martin Keown uh, when Arsenal, I mean, this is getting a bit very Arsenal orientated as it would, but Martin Keown was in charge of the defence when Arsenal went on that run to the Champions League final. That's right. And then look what happened to Martin Keown after. He started getting the plaudits and then he got his P45. Both begin with P. But he, do you think did. that could happen to Steve Bold or is this a complete. Well, Steve Bold was really, he was, like, he was like the reserve, wasn't he? I mean, he was like the third of the two. I mean, Adams and Keon were the, the big one with Dixon and Winter Burn. You know, just, you know, I do actually know a bit about Arsenal, yeah. actually. You know? And who comes across as being the most sort of strong as a personality? Keown or, or Bold, if you had to take your pick? Who's going to be more of a sort of club man, a quiet kind of guy? I'm sort of. I thought Keon was, well, actually, he was, he was clubbed by uh, Van Nistelrooy, wasn't he? Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think he came out of that quite well, though. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't want to mess with Martin, would you? Martin Keown, yeah. 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 Um, I think uh, Baldy's doing alright, isn't he? He's the new Pat Rice. Oh yeah, new Pat Rice. So you think he'll be around forever and uh, do you think perhaps Arsene Wenger will move upstairs and let Steve Bold take over? Or could there possibly be a manager coming in from Japan? We've talked about Pixie before. We have Pixie's indeed, got the lot. Yeah. Pixie's got the lot. Ooh. Um, yeah, well I've used that game a few Ooh. times. But Nagoya Grampus, could they give him up? He's not uh, doing so well, is he, this year? Well, he's had a lot of injuries, yeah. a lot of players are not doing as they're told. And of course, he lost his start at the London Olympics. I mean, he's had a, he's had a few problems. Uh, but, you know, to be mm. honest, the J-League is, is like so close. The top mm. teams, they get to the top, they lose. The second team, they lose. The third team, the fourth team, they lose. It's squeezed right up. The team in literally eighth or ninth position, and I think Nagoya in seventh position, could still win the league, to be honest, with a, with a decent run. Yeah, put yeah. a decent run. It's it's no. whoever wants it the most. You wouldn't put it past them, would you? But um, you'd certainly put it past. I wouldn't put it past Arsenal to um, to bring in a player or two. Oh, and no. They're not going to do it now, are they? But look at and what about going out? Andre Alshalin not going out after all. Well, he so. wasn't going to Russia, was he? Well, no. There was a lot of talk about him going there, though. He upset was, everyone, didn't he? I yeah. think he, isn't he going to star in the The Hobbit? Oh yeah, it was, um, the, new, the new films. Like he's he's right? Gollum and. Um, and our sin is, is who? Gandalf, right? Gandalf, yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. Well, we haven't managed to put all the other players in different different roles yet, but we'll get around to it. So, yeah, anyway, he was quite close to joining Dinamo Moscow, apparently. Dan Petresco, that name rings yes, a bell. Yes, yes. Uh, he said, I wanted to add this player to the team, but Andre said no to Dinamo. So a bit of rhyming going on there. Appar apparently, Arsenal offered him on a one-year loan, which doesn't make a lot of sense because he's out of contract uh, next summer. Yeah, well, so, so it sounds like do you, someone do you, should be uh, shot, perhaps. Shot. You know, yeah. that, is that is that too good for? Should we get rid of him? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, there's uh, there was also talk he could leave on a free transfer and go to Zenit. But this is uh, this is the um, quote from from uh, some I don't know right R A I Novosti, and um, they're quoting the Zenit general director Maxim Mitrofanov who said, uh, we'd been talking about bringing us, um, not Arsene, <laughs> like bringing, bringing Andre in for a long time. But um, no. apparently, he sort of went German there, but apparently he didn't meet both conditions. And he said, only Andre knows the second condition. 
<laughs> I'm trying to work it out. What was that other condition? I mean, have you got any ideas about that? Sure, you didn't spell it wrong. Conditioner. It was actually. It was, <laughs> it was like you wanted something. Oh, a conditioner. Shot, yeah. Conditioner well, yeah, I'm, you've featured in a lot of adverts, as you know. Compare the meerkat. Dot com. Is it? Is in that? See the bit of advertising there as well. And um, well, am I talking of advertising here? Zenith. I'm talking about sport. But talking, talking about Zenith. Yeah. They've yeah. picked up Hulk instead, haven't they? Oh, yeah. Hulk. Or as, as you pronounce his name properly, it's Hooky, believe you yeah. or not. I mean, but Hulk sounds a lot better, doesn't it? Hooky. Is that in Japanese? Hooky. Hooky. Well, no, that's no. the real name. You know, when, oh, really? when he comes to, people come to Japan, they actually get his name right. And, but you see, when I look oh, yeah, at his name, he was his in Japan, name, by the way. His, his name, name is that long. I mean, it's been cut down to Hulk. Exactly. Which is only four letters. But in Brazilian or mm. Portuguese, the, uh, the, 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 I guess, the pronunciation of Hulk is Hooky. Yeah, <laughs> and you didn't you know he was in Japan, did you? I mean, years ago he played for a Kawasaki Frontale and uh, Yomiuri Verdi, as they were known then. Now they're Very called tasty, uh, Tokyo eh? Verdi. Yummy. And uh, Yummy, yes. Mm. So, of course, he was a bit of a you know a bit of a wally. And, uh, he was known for his diving and his uh, petulance and his amount of yellow cards. And he was he, like a David Beckham in disguise. Yeah. Well, David was like that, so he sort of matured. Yeah, David. He said, well, if you knew him, like yeah, David, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're mates. Yeah, my friend David. Well, if I was arsing, I'd go like that to him. Oh, that's yeah. what, yeah. Yeah, he did do some of that. And I'm not too sure what that meant. I thought it meant, why don't you sign for me? But he was training with Arsenal at the time, and he was wearing an Arsenal, uh, Arsenal kit and everything. So there we were, speculating away, as oh, we do. Have you got any speculation while I'm on that, on that subject? Well, uh, no. Nothing? No, no. Not speculation? No. I thought you were well, going to tell yeah. me that Kiyotaki might... Kiyotake. Yeah, or well, Kiyotaki is FC Nuremberg fans. Hello there, guten Abend. Oh, uh, he's uh, obviously got a, you know, a couple of years contract, but I mean, he's good enough. He's good enough for Arsenal. You think so? He's good enough for anyone in the Premier League, and uh, FC Nuremberg fans will be hoping that he is not taken away. Is he as good as Kiyo we are? We are Miyaichi. Kiyotaki has featured on oh, yeah. J Soccer Magazine. Yeah. Cover. There, yeah, there you go. Oh, and you've got the new one as well. Andrew. We have the new one. You want to see the new one? Yeah, yes, top. you're going to have to strain your eyes here, put those specs on. There is the new there one is. there. Shimizu S. Pulse featured on the cover. Alex Brosk, good day, Australia. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. I'm not saying oi. I'm okay. not saying oi. Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, it's got uh, Shimizu S. Pulse. It's got, uh, it's got a nice, a superb. See if I can find it for you. Right, uh, while you were at that. <laughs> Shinji Kagawa Manchester United poster. Oh, is it? It's very nice. It's I'll coming find up. It. I'll find it later. Yeah, the iPad does take a little while, doesn't it? No, it's lovely. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, also taking a little while. Mapu Yanga Mabiwa. He was on the move, apparently. The Montpellier captain, because Montpellier won the French League, of course. Oui, oui, and, oui. and that's where we got Olivier Giroud from. Oui, oui, so oui. I was expecting... I, I actually made this story up in, with Giroud. Not made it up, I just speculated. Maybe we would start playing with Montpellier. Should be wearing an Arsenal shirt. Yeah. So that was my speculation. That led to oui, oui, some oui. newspaper stories, which oui. led to us actually signing Olivier Giroud. But Mapu Yanga Mabiwa wants to go to AC Milan instead. Of oh, sort of. But 4.7 million, uh, million pounds, it doesn't sound a lot of money. Arsenal made a tentative offer. What does that mean in, in sort of football speak? Does that, mean, does that mean a bid or does that mean there was somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody phoned up his agent? A tentative offer means they throw all this money into a teepee. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Or a wigwam. You know, oh, okay. So the, <laughs> the money. <laughs> so it's not actually a faxed bid or anything no, like no, that? No, no. It's just tentative. It's just... Um, I went to the doctor yeah. the other day. I said, doctor, I feel like a wigwam. Then sometimes I feel like a teepee. Yeah. You know what he said? What? He said, you're too tense. <laughs> oh, I can't he, likes, he likes that one. <laughs> I can't believe that joke popped up. But um, but yeah, the other good news <laughs> was that good news. Was that good news? <laughs> I'm not too sure. The other good news is actually Cole is stalling on a contract. And Talk Sport are running the story. I was talking about Talk Sport earlier, but you cut me off. But I'm bringing it back now. Talk Sport are running the story that actually Cole could perhaps return to Arsenal. Could you possibly imagine it in a month of Sundays or a month of any day of the week you like? If Ashley Cole returned to Arsenal, then he'd have to wear a helmet when yeah, he plays. Rather than that. Perhaps yeah. by Arai. They yeah. make very good helmets. Do they really? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Bob the Builder type helmets. Arai, Arai. Yeah. Great helmets, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I think he'd certainly need um, one of them if he hasn't got one already. Uh, so he'd need a tin hat and um, yeah. anywhere else he could possibly end up. Not uh, that we care anymore. I'll tell you what, Manchester City would just snap him up like that, wouldn't they? And cliche, what would happen to him? He would be uh, in reserves? Well, it's a bit of a cliche that they've yeah. got too many left backs, isn't it? Oh, you know? okay. So. 
I think I better better move on from that one then. And what about Bakari Sanya talking of fullbacks? He said Bakari. Oh, yeah. Bakari. 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 Bakari Sanya. He said. Oh yeah. He's in his French Bacari. accent. Hello. Me, I watched Manchester City's parade on TV. I saw Samir Nasri and Gail Clichy lift the trophy, and I want that. And he also added at the end of it was a long, long thing. He put, I don't know, Le Keep or something. He said, "I'm the only player from the 2007 starting eleven who is still here." Oh no! So sounds like he's not very happy. C'est la vie. What would you would you read anything into that, or would you just say it's Sanya under pressure from reporters to say something? Um, does that sound like a happy Sanya to you? A happy Sanya. I, I hmm. reckon. Uh, well, he, he could go back to the tents and say he's not a happy camper, right? Yeah. But, uh, I think uh, it's probably all been put into his mouth. You know, he said, I'm the only one here from 2007 still. And they were like, what? I'm the only one still here from 2007. You know, I mean, it's uh, French reporters, yeah, yeah they're eating all the, between the frog's legs and the garlic. They're like, oh, what can we write in the newspaper? Be careful with those sort of comments. Pardon, pardon. Yeah, I think you should. Excusez-moi, mesdames, yeah. monsieur. Yeah. I'm not sure if I pardon you. I might have this accent, but I will not allow that kind of thing. But actually, that was a, that was a go at uh, the, the journalists, uh, of course, of which we're part of, of course, as opposed to the French. No? Yeah, I mean, that's true. They, that's true. I mean, what they did with... Uh, oh, no, it's, it's a long story. I'll just pop out of frame. Michael Silvestre, talking of French. Michael Silvestre, why did I say that? We were, I couldn't keep a straight face. But he's not that bad a defender, is he? Everyone says he's a bad defender, Silvestre. But I'm not having it. I think he's quite quick for a, for an oldish guy. He must be about 34, 35. He didn't lose his pace last time I saw him. He just but can't Arsenal concentrate. Fans don't like he it. just can't just concentrate. Like Every time he's, I thought I thought a puddy cat. You know, it's just. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you really think he's, he's weak? Is he as weak as Philippe Senderos, who we used to have on our books? Senderos. Um, he's about as weak as. Uh, Nah, I don't, I don't. I don't write quite rating myself. I mean, he's, he's obviously done all right, hasn't he? Man United, Arsenal, France. Yeah, I mean, not bad. Not French bad. players, you know. They're also, let's not have a, let's not have another. Go and let's play. talk a little bit more about French-speaking players. Didier Drogba, he could be on the move apparently. Nicolas Anelka, Nicola Anelka, could but both of those players end up at Arsenal. Didier Drogba, obviously, has been linked with Arsenal before and, and said he really. He was quite close to joining. He likes the club. He likes Arsene Wenger, and he likes, the, he likes the commission. He likes, he likes his the cash. Brother likes He's the not getting any cash at the moment. That's the trouble. So. Is, well, I said at jsoccer.com and jsoccer magazine. I said it months ago. I said if Drogba lasts three months in China, I'll be very surprised. Really? Why? Why was that without being too uh, I mean, too nosy? Too nosy. Well, cannot be nosy then. Marlon right. Harewood was there. He, he gave us the. Uh, he gave us all the rundown. And all. I mean. Drogba is even more in the, the, the limelight than Drogba. I mean, so was it that bad for Harewood? I yeah, didn't really I mean, know the full story on that. The food's thing. bad, the, uh, the training, the, you know, I mean, I don't know Drogba's situation, but you can't have guests in your hotel room, you know, for example. What well, still? Have, it's still like that today. That's what Harewood was saying. It was terrible stuff, you know. Yeah. I can't, I mean, Drogba, he likes to be the king and the boss of everything, doesn't he? Seems that way. Uh, Lorraine, you know? Yeah, yeah. Bit of French there for you. Right, just so about the there. He won't be coming so, to us. Um, I'm reckoning the boss. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. But he can't speak French. Maybe Nagoya Grampus. Mm. And uh, nice Anelka, why? Anelka's not being talked about as a possible signing for anyone. Why? Because he's rubbish. He's not that rubbish. He's rubbish. He's, he's never been rubbish. rubbish. I'm not having No, it. he's never been rubbish, but his attitude yeah. stinks, man. His brother is the agent, right? Oh, yeah, no offence, right. you know, but yeah. I mean, yeah, let, okay, he's signed for a club. Let's find another one, line up lots of more yeah. commission. Yeah? I mean, yeah. you know, if Mr. Anelka, if you're listening, refuted. Mm. Yeah, well, I doubt if he's listening, so it won't be refuted, <laughs> and then it will go down as fact. So, um, yeah, we met but this is one other thing, just going back to Sanya for a moment and his sort of contractual situation. He's not out of contract till 2014, but Talk Sport were running the story that um, Nigel Winsburn, the old Arsenal left back legend. Yes, he's coming saying, back. He's not coming back. Some people might be pleased about that, but. Well, Gibbs, Joe, you know, Gibbsy I added. think I'd like, I still I could, I could really play good at left back for Arsenal, you know, I think I could do well, it. Well, what he did say, using that action, really, what Arsenal need to do is start nailing them down. Not nailing them up, nailing them down to Nail contracts. Up, I, Nail yeah, up. I knew that was coming, that's why I threw it in. So it's about time they started nailing them down when when they've got one and a half years to go. And so, well, Sanya hasn't quite got one and a half years to go, but he will have come January, I think. So, so come January, so he's, got, he's got to be nailed up or nailed down or nailed, nailed somewhere. Up, I say. So do you think that's um do you think there's something amiss 
arrive with the Arsenal policy of, of letting these players get right down to 2013. I've got a list of them and I'm, I don't want to bore you with it because I know you, you're sort of, your yawning threshold is very low, right? So was, yeah, I think so, Fabregas should come back, man. Yeah, yeah, so Fabregas will come back, but all these players that, that could be out of contract quite soon, or Shalvin okay. being one of them, um, Theo Walcott, obviously. Yep, obviously. I mean, uh, do you think that's the right mess up by the club, letting Theo Walcott get to this stage where they've got to keep him on? And Listen, in January, you can start talking to other clubs. If I'm on 75,000 quid a week and I want 100,000 quid a week and I'm not in the first team, I, you know, I certainly think one deserves to be, you know, he's not starting regularly. I mean, the Ox is a superstar. Mie mm. is lined up to come in next year. They don't need him anyway. So about 25,000 quid a week. Okay, that's 100,000 quid a month or 1.2 million a year. How much are they going to sell him for next year? And they're like, hmm, balance, balance, balance. No, we'll keep him as it is and we'll let him go for nothing. Yeah, do you, you don't think that's a little bit crazy? Given Just they spent a little a bit. Lot of, a lot. I mean, they could sell, sell him for a lot of money, right? Yeah. In, the, ge in January, obviously not so the much. The power's all with the players and the agents now. Bosman, string him up, I say, string him up. So how much will Theo be worth in January now? A lot more than Alex Song. <laughs> Yeah, but we're not going to get more than we. Well, oh, got oh, sorry, I'll rephrase that. A lot more than I think Alex Song was worth. Yeah. So about five million. So I reckon you know. That yeah, yeah. I five think, million. Uh, yeah, I'll make you right. And that's that's a very unfortunate turn of events from my point of view because I was hoping hoping for at least ten million, maybe mm. fifteen. I mean, if he was properly signed up to a contract, why are they not renewing these contracts? They keep saying every time Arsenal get asked about it, they, or Arsene Wenger normally say, "Oh, we uh, we have too many things to deal with uh, right now, and uh, we will revisit it come the end of the season." And the end of the season comes, oh, well, there's some championship on, and they kind of contact the player right now, and there's always some reason why we can't renegotiate the contract. So, oh, I'm sorry, are you, so, are you asking a question? So, well, I'm not going to bother. Do you get silly accent? Yeah. All right. I can't even do a silly accent. It's, it's what he's come to now. Emmanuel Frimpong talking. I'm not. I'm not going to use that word. No, Emmanuel Frimpong. It's been a bit silly on Twitter, but he's pretty good on the pitch. Wouldn't you agree? I would agree. And he's he's very enthusiastic. He's back in training. 17th of September. So make a date in your calendar. I know you won't forget that date. But he's. Um, I'll tell you what. He's um, out of contract 2013. So what a surprise! Really. So, I bet you've got a whole list there, haven't you? Yeah, I wanted to throw that in because <laughs> it was quite a nice link. Not that tenuous at all. So anyway, that, that's what I was gonna gonna leave you with that that thought that Frimpong could be on the way if he. Uh, I, if think he does. I mean, what, what do Arsenal do with a situation like that? Though? When you've got a player who's had a lot of injuries, he's got quite a lot of potential if he stays fit. But you know, he goes into he goes into challenges gung ho, which we like to see. Mm. But then he gets himself injured again. What do you do? Do you give him another contract or do you? Or short-term contract. I think he's Arsenal through, through and through, from what I can imagine. He is. Yes, he bleeds red as much as any player does nowadays. I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bleeds red. Yeah, yeah. red. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Are you talking about Abu Dhabi, by the way? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, let's come on to him. I mean, what would you do with him as well? He's out of contract. When do you want to know when he's out of contract? I'd say 2014. 14, I'd say. I reckon those two players should share a position. <laughs> you know, and basically I basically share a go. contract. Yeah, you, you two guys are there, you share the contract, share the money, share the share everything, you share the contract, share the, and you know, just yeah. they're sort of similar players, aren't they? I mean, they're... well, I don't think so actually. I think Abu Dhabi. He's, I mean, he, you know, he's a bit he, more creative isn't he, as well, in his way. In his way, he's, he's, he's a bit taller as well. He's a bit taller, a bit more sort of stick insecty, gangly. He's gangly. He's Ian Ormondroid. Um, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go that far mm -hmm. because it wasn't quite the same sort of level of player as Diaby. <laughs> Not even Crouchish, but but yeah, Diaby. Um, so you so you rate him? That's yeah. what you're trying to tell me. Yeah, I think that one. Arsenal. They've got, they've got plenty of players. They've just got to get put that team together. Yeah, they've got to want it more. So uh, having seen the Liverpool game, you saw all 90 minutes. Would you say Arsenal are realistic contenders for the title, like uh, Peter Hill Wood seems to think? He says, I don't see any reason why we can't win the title. I we won't spend £50 million on any one individual player. I see, no, he's changed his And accent. we don't, we he's don't, not French, is we he? don't want your sort. He'd really? say that. You won't be allowed on the board, you know that, if you're not the right sort. Oh, I'm not good on your sort. We wouldn't want your Arsenal sort. need to be a, a team as one, basically. Yeah. Yeah, they need to be a, oh, yeah. okay. Good advertising for that shirt. So, um, no, it's not for sale. So, <laughs> the shirt's not for sale. And Joe we won't did buy just anyone. Me 200 quid for it, but yeah. I'm like, no. no. And, we, <laughs> and we won't buy anyone for £50 million, that's quite clear. But are Arsenal 
title contenders with this current Well, everybody squad. thinks realistically that it's Manchester United, Manchester City and Chelsea have got all the players, all the money, all the... But, you know, I mean, let's... You know, I suppose it's not really 1981 anymore, is it, where Ipswich and Aston Villa can challenge for a title. Mm. But um, it's anybody's title until... Here, Mr. Cliché here, isn't it? But, you know, it all was down to the end of the season and if you play... Okay. If they can keep... If people like Frimpong and Diaby can keep clear of injuries... Arsenal have a team. Arsenal can do it. Yeah, in my team. humble we've opinion, we've got a team. But are we going to beat the likes of Man City, Man United, Liverpool. Chelsea? Maybe we can beat Liverpool. That was a great result. There's no getting away from it. It was a great mm. result. I was very pleased that Diaby proved me wrong on one yeah. occasion. Let's see how many games he can prove me wrong. Players are up for it, mm. as they say. You know, they want it more, as they mm. say. When they play up against Man City and Man United, anything can happen. But name me. This, this is kind of little quiz question in a way. I don't think there's an answer to it. Well, no, 1927, no 1 nil. I want to Cardiff. know the answer to this question. When was the last time a title, the English Premier League or top flight title, was won on a shoestring? On a shoestring? Yeah, on a shoestring. So think yeah. back. You can't even say Blackburn because they spent, no, they spent, they spent a, a fortune. Yeah, exactly. I think it might be Aston Villa, 1981. Mm. And they only used 14 players in that year. Did you know that? Did you know that? And Ipswich. But I thought they the spent same. a lot of money as well, Villa. No, the no, no, no. Well, yeah, they had a few big signings away. and they had a lot of big names. Peter With? Well, big actually, it wasn't that much Peter With. Did he come from Price? Cows, no. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they they spent, weren't cheap. They weren't cheap. Oh, they weren't cheap. No, yeah, so they. I mean, it was a bit unexpected in winning the title. And uh, it was Ipswich, did they have Tyson and Muren that year? I'm not yeah. sure. So, I mean, they spent a bit of money. But yeah, but they didn't win the title. Well. So no, they, they got close. They came second. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the top two teams yeah, yeah. were like unfashionable. Yeah, yeah. QPR got teams. close. QPR got close in the 70s. Yeah. They came second. Francis, Bowles. Yeah. So they didn't cost a lot. They didn't cost a but lot. But they were like hoop things, you know. Yeah, no, yeah. Team, no team ever wins the league when they wear hoops. So, yeah. So, if anyone has the answer to that question, do let us know. And, uh, yeah. Where? And yeah, if, I like that. So, who, who won the championship? <laughs> we'll call it the championship. Okay, on a know. shoestring. Yeah. Who won the top division on a shoestring? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the next question is what qualifies as a shoestring? But let's let's just, you know. Let's just be sensible about these things. We can do that, can't we? Anyway, yeah, I think yeah. we should leave it there. And um, any last minute plugging you want to do? Plugging can be considered quite a rude word, but not Pl plugging. Yes, I am Alan Gibson of J Soccer Magazine, in case you didn't know. Huh. And uh, Joe is irritating me by visiting the office regularly in the last <laughs> few weeks and pulling me in about asking me questions about teams that I don't know anything about. But if I know about Japanese football, and if you like Japanese football, J Soccer Magazine is for you. Alan at jsoccer.com, A L A N at jsoccer.com. And for being a fan, do they get a free fan? Yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan of this company myself. Yeah. Alan at jsoccer.com, or just go straight to the website, www.jsoccer.com, and uh, you can click on the magazine and uh, just buy it, please. Yeah. yeah. I could sell another 120 this week to pay the rent. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what, if you do that, you should, you should put some money into the Arsenal transfer budget. Yes. We need every penny we can get. Or I'll give uh, Theo Walcott a, a raise, five or a week. Yeah, yeah, give him a raise and we'll stay put. Okay, we'll leave it there, shall we? Until the next time, I've got to come over here. Up the Gooners!